Hello and welcome. My name is Jeff Ball. This is my astrophotography channel and thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to share with you my experience with two separate O3 filters. If you are engaged in astrophotography, you may have ventured down the narrow band filter path. And at least in my case, it's been a little bit challenging. And I wanted to share with you my results. In particular, it's mainly an experience review on this filter, the Astronomic 6 nanometer Max FR 03 2 inch mounted filter. So that's the experience I'm going to share with you today. And I have a little bit of a of a comparison of the two and I'll tell you why I got into this. But you know, the supply chain constraints that are prevalent across many industries are obviously present in astrophotography and astronomy. I'm curious, share in the comments maybe some of the challenges you've had with the current supply constraint. But in my case, it was this O3 filter, and I've been looking for one. And let me show you exactly what this filter is and where you can find it. So I've been searching for O3 filter for several months, and like I said, the supply constraint has really put a delay into that acquisition. So I saw this filter pop up on High Point Scientific. I really didn't see a whole lot of experience on it shared in Cloudy Nights or any of the other forums. So as you can see, it's not an inexpensive filter. It's an Astronomic Max FR03 6 nanometer CCD 2 inch round mounted filter. Now, what really intrigued me, I've had pretty good results with astronomic light reduction filters, light pollution filters, I should say. And this was the one criteria, one feature that really struck out to me. Experience very high contrast with no haloing. And I'm going to share with you some of my experiences and exactly how this astronomic filter has stood up so far in my early time with it. Before I take you into Photoshop and show you some of the results, I want to share with you my previous filter experience. And it was with the Botter F2 high speed narrowband CCD filter. I don't think this entire set is still available anymore. I just got an email from High Point Scientific that Botter has a new at least a new O3 filter. But this is what I purchased months ago. I got this to use with my Rasa because Botter claims this is the filter set to use with Fast Optics F2, and they specifically list the Rasa here. So the results I'm going to show you in Photoshop are with the Hydrogen Alpha, the O3, and the S2 filter, and you'll see what uh, drove me on the O3 decision. Now, this is the new filter that Botter has. They're calling it the Botter O3 F2 High Speed CMOS Optimized 6.5 nanometer filter. Now I believe this filter in this set was an eight nanometer. So it's a little tighter bandwidth and I guess when they're saying optimized, that they are talking about it. They are indicating it's optimized for F3.4 down to F1.8. So they again are specifically referencing Rasa here. I'm not seeing, maybe I missed it, but I'm not seeing a claim about halo reduction with this filter set. So the filter set I am going to show you includes this O3, which I do not believe is available any longer from Botter. Okay, so let's make a point of that. As you can see here, this entire filter set was 984 versus my Astronomic Max FR at 639. So let's jump into Photoshop. Let me show you the results and you can make your own judgments from there. 
My narrowband imaging setup consists of the ASI-294MM Pro with the 2-inch filter drawers. A color filter wheel is really not very practical for me. I'm lucky to get one night. So I insert the Max FR Astronomic 03 and all narrow band filters into their own dedicated 2-inch filter holder into the 2-inch filter slot on a nightly basis. And that's how I gather my narrow band imaging data. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, and this is the project that I'm working on, the Seder the butterfly nebula, that whole area there in Cygnus. This is the star Seder. And this is the hydrogen alpha with the Botter F2. The data looks great. I've had excellent results with the, the hydrogen alpha F2 on the Botter. And I can't remember that bandwidth. It might be an 8 or even as wide as 12 on that. I'd have to look it up again. But I've had excellent results. Most of these images were taken not necessarily at new moon, but I tried to have a very minimal moon in the sky, if at all possible. So that's the hydrogen alpha. Now, one of the things I like to do is really evaluate the quality of the, the filter, especially with regards to halos, using StarNet. So that's the star image, and this is the StarNet image with the hydrogen alpha botter F2. Then let me go on to show you the S2. This is the S2 and with the stars and without the stars. You can see there's a little bit of haloing here, but this is fairly inconsequential, especially the technique that I use based on JP Metzavano. And I'm going to do a complete video on that process as I'm really getting closer to finalizing that. But that is filter data that I can work with pretty nicely. Uh, there's the star, there's the star net. So let me show you the O3 filtered with the astronomic 6 nanometer Max FR. So this is the Max FR with stars. And this is the Botter F2 that came with the F2 high speed optimized filter, narrowband filter set. And so you can see what's happening here with that Botter F2 versus the Astronomic. Again, I don't believe this Astronomic filter is available anymore. So I am comparing maybe an obsolete filter, but this is my experience with it. So this is the F2 Botter, and this is the Astronomic Max FR, again designed for fast optics, so they are down to F2 on the... Um, Oh, I should say, this is all the scope is the astrophysics 92 millimeter stowaway. Again, on the ZWOASI 294MM Pro. And all of these are roughly about two hours of total acquisition time, and sub exposures are 10 minutes. And a gain is, I leave it at a unity gain at 120, I believe, in this case. So this is the experience. Now let me show you again. I really like to go to the starless. Now this is the starless with the astronomic filter. And again, it's about two hours. And you can see there are a couple of halos here. But again, with my technique and the role that the S2 StarNet image plays within the overall narrowband processing, this is insignificant. That is easily dealt with. This is the haloing with the Botter, the Botter F2. Again, here's the Botter F2 with stars. This is the Botter F2, again, on the Astrophysics 92 millimeter stowaway. This is the Botter with StarNet applied. Now, some of this can be handled with some time invested and have data that would certainly be useful in a narrowband composition. But it's going to take a lot of time. And this artifact right here around Saturn, look, you can dodge. These, I believe, right here, these stars right here are magnitude 7, I believe. And, of course, these are even fainter. You can see how faint the magnitudes go, and you still have haloing around those stars. So 
But of course, this is a crazy artifact here that would be very challenging to deal with. Could you deal with it? Yes. It's really going to compromise the data significantly. So let me go back again. This is the astronomic data. Let me zoom in. Um, and this is the, oh, I should say, the one difference here, the the data that I acquired with the botter was at bin 1 and 2.3 micron pixels, and I went with bin 2 at 4.6 micron pixels with the astronomic 6 nanometer filter. So that's the astronomic. This is the botter. That explains what looks to be probably a little bit lower noise and but you can see the signal is actually stronger, a little bit more contrasty with the astronomic filter at 6 nanometers versus, I believe, the botter is at at least 8 nanometers. So it's a wider filter, but this is what you get with 6 nanometers versus 8 nanometers, 6 versus 8. And, of course, the key here is with O3 filters, is you're going to have to find somebody's experience in dealing with the halos. What does that filter do, especially with decently fast optics, with haloing? So this is the stars. Again, there's the S, I'm sorry, there's the um, astronomic. And this is way beyond 100%. That's 141% in Photoshop. That's 100 and that's 100% right there in Photoshop. And this is the botter filter. There's the astronomic filter. The botter filter, astronomic. So let me just do a summary for you. The astronomic O3 6 nanometer CCD Max FR2 so far with about I've had about 6 hours total acquisition with this but some of that was taken with a lot of moon so I really never processed it completely the other point I will say is with all of those images I just showed to you I just applied a simple STF stretch in PixInsight to every one of those images. So nothing was done differently in processing, just an STF stretch to the data after it had already been calibrated. But so far, I'm pretty happy. This will be an O3 filter that I can employ in my imaging train. There are a lot of options out there. Of course, right now, the biggest decision point is can you get the option you want? If you can't, this is already on back order again. They, at least at, at high point, they say more are on the way. But that new Botter F2 optimized set is available. I'm looking forward. If you have experience with O3 filters, I've seen Astrodon experience, and I know it's excellent. But it's really challenging to get an Astrodon O3 filter. If you have O3 experience with another filter, another filter set, please share it with me. I would love to hear about it in the comments or if you know of someone who's using an entirely different filter set. So I hope this video has helped you in really understanding what the astronomic filter can do. I would endorse it at this point, even at that price point. It, you just don't want to waste dark sky time or time under the stars. And this is going to provide an image that I can definitely incorporate into my narrowband image process. Please stay tuned. I'm going to eventually put together a narrowband workflow, again, based on the JP Metsylvania I talked about in the photo, Photons to Photos show. I think it was two weeks ago. So I don't mean to usurp any credit. This is his workflow. I am making some tweaks to it with a little bit of a PixInsight Photoshop hybrid approach. I'm going to share that. Hopefully it's of benefit to somebody in the community. But thanks so much for checking in on this video. I wish you clear skies. I am heading to the mountains for a long Labor Day weekend of astro imaging, and the weather looks great. So we are very excited about this, and uh, I hope to catch up with you soon. 
if you have a moment, we are going to do a Photons to Photos tomorrow night, Wednesday night, September 1st at 8 o'clock here on the channel. So stop by and check us out. Take care and clear skies.